Kau tu sebelah that's amazing. I've I've just been to a church service led by a man who has eaten human meat, and what a journey he's been on. And now he's a, a pastor, and he's absolutely convinced that if he stops preaching and Christianity disappears from this area, that cannibalism and fighting and all the dark old bad days will come back. It's the Biyami themselves who sometimes refer to the past as the dark old days. The days when there was much fear of witchcraft. During Sing Sing's, the song leader would claim to identify a suspected sorcerer. This would lead to the accused being killed and eaten. The arrival of Christian missionaries in Papua New Guinea may have helped bring cannibalism to an end, but they did not bring an end to the killing of suspected magic men. Before I leave Negade, I want to find out if song leader Titikawa is still able to identify sorcerers. But when I find him, I learn he's become ill with malaria. He's really not well at all, and uh, he's flat out and he's running quite a high fever. So, is he okay? He's been sweating all night and he hasn't got much sleep. So, but he's very kindly agreed to uh, come out and talk about the old days and what goes on at a Sing Sing. First, I want to know exactly how Titikawa identified sorcerers, something that led to their cannibalization. Could I ask, can you describe to me what happens for you in the Sing Sing? I'm <laughs> Did it become difficult to do sing sings and difficult to heal people or what changed when the missionaries arrived? With no one to join his Sing Sings, Titikawa has lost his connection with the spirit world. When was the last time you saw your spirit guide, the lady? Titikawa is no longer able to identify sorcerers. I'm interested if he believes the Biyami could ever go back to practicing cannibalism. <laughs> Thank you. Sleep well. Despite there still being some fear of sorcery in the areas I've visited, cannibalism appears to be long in the past. As for finding communities even deeper in the jungles of Papua New Guinea, which still eat human meat, that's another journey. Question is why I led you to watch this clip before starting to talk. It is simple. Lots of people are accusing me that I am non-moral and non-ethical and that somehow that influences my sorcery. First, I am not 
immoral or e-ethical, I have my own moral and ethical standards, my own moral or ethical standards are maybe different than the moral or ethical standards of society I live in, but I am not a monstrosity, as some people claim I am, but I filmed this video to fuck them in the ass and to prove that sorcery he has no moral limits or conundrums. Imposing limits on sorcery based on morality is something humans do. And sorcery functions according to laws which are outside of morality, limitation, ignorance and all other things. Sorcery is something much more ancient, much more powerful. And as you have seen in this video, those leaders, those song leaders of the tribe, they held the tribe together and they healed the members of the tribe, but they also used their power to destroy the enemies in the most brutal men, in the most brutal way. So it doesn't make those song leaders illegitimate. Their brutality doesn't make them worse spiritualists or worse sorcerers. Actually, their brutality was what held their culture together. Because I tapped a little bit into the current of Segeme or Sageme, the spirit mentioned in this video. And I will show you her sigil in the video as well as the magical chant for conjuring her. What she tried to tell me is that her definition of magic man or sorcerer who harms the community is a little bit more elaborate than what people think, but it is the same definition used by the seers who guided the cannibal raids. Now, what is her rationale? So according to Sageme or Segeme, magic man is everybody who uses elaborate rituals to kill members of his community or harm them without any significant reason. B. Evil magic man is somebody who unintentionally harms the members of his community with really strong negative thoughts. C. Evil magic man is somebody who isn't of use to his community and tries to exploit community for his own personal gain. And D. Evil magic man is somebody who has corrupted genetics which can in the future provide weak offspring, non-beneficial for the tribe. So her definition of magic man is really broad. Now, as far as warfare is, is concerned, that warfare among the tribes is actually the thing which preserved the tribes until this point. Because all of the less hostile tribes who didn't practice warfare got assimilated. Old sorcerer mentioned the name of his spirit guide in the video. And the name of the spirit guide was Sogeme. So since this video was of interest to me, I decided to channel Magical Chant and a sigil for calling of Sogeme, the spirit guide of the sorcerer in a video. And I indeed channel. Chant is Sogeme, Sogeme, Eyeye. Let me repeat once again. Sogeme, Sogeme, Eyeye. Make sure to raise proper sacred space before calling this spirit. This spirit is necromantic in nature, one of the ascended ancestors of the tribe in question. 
Now, to raise the sacred space for preparation of this spirit, you can use any raising of the sacred space methods on my YouTube channel, which are intended for summoning dark spirits. But for the purpose of this clip, I will give short necromantic version of my raising of the sacred space technique. So short necromantic version of my raising of the sacred space technique is visualize a black sun above your crown, radiating rays and penetrating the edges of your sacred space. But this time, energy arising from the edges of the space should be dense dark green, aka necromantic. And the magical chant you should use during repetition of visualization is Solis Nigratis Necromantie. You will see the chant on the screen. And now, after we finish discussing this, we will explain why it is important for us to be aware of things like ritual cannibalism, human sacrifice, and spirits who can teach that knowledge. The spirit I mentioned in a video, Sogeme, can teach you cannibalism, vampirism, advanced necrosophic transformation, work with the dead, bestial methods of self-empowerment, healing, empowerment of the soul, empowerment of the body, traveling into the underworld, transformation of astral body through warlike alchemy, necrosophic gnosis, and many many more. Why I film video about such a controversial spirit? The spirit guide of a sorcerer within a cannibalistic tribe. Because I think this example is really interesting. Remember the words of sorcerer. There are many magic men out there and we should hunt them. But church doesn't hunt the magic men. And it makes people die. At the surface level, this seems to be crazy shaman obsessed with black magic who kills random people. But I think this is surface level understanding of the phenomena. You see, if you tried my methodology and summoned Sogime, you will be 100% clear and certain that he is real. If you have any astral senses, Sogime is a really powerful spirit. She is one of the most powerful individual ascended masters I ever summoned. Sogime is truly part of the ancient current ancient form of necromancy we the modern humans do not have access to because we are too embellished in our civilization too embellished in our soft way of life we cannot even comprehend the ancient primordial mysteries of those old spirits with whom we lost contact and i wanted to give my audience different perspective of on magic. I wanted to give my audience more primordial perspective on magic. But let's return to the words of the sorcerer. There are many magic men, yet church isn't hunting them. And I will link source video in the description. And within source video, there are certain people in the villages who recently converted to Christianity and they don't believe in spirits anymore. They believe only in God. 
Now, let me tell you what Christianity does. Christianity strengthens the veil between the worlds. So, in a Christian land, it's more difficult to contact any other spirit who is not associated with Jehovah or part of Jehovah's tradition. That, in the long term, creates spiritually impotent populations, because majority of people are not compatible nor willing to study mysteries of Jehovah. So, you have entire thousands on thousands of people with the astral senses closed, which creates materialism as the end result. Because if you have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people with the astral senses closed, then over time they will start becoming atheists, they will stop practicing evolving spiritually and it will lead to mass hordes of ignorant people which are extremely susceptible to control. Remember, those tribes remain isolated and uncontrolled for thousands and thousands of years and defeated other tribes and other invaders from their territory. But as soon as they lost their tribal ways, you can see modern civilization come and destroying their culture completely. We can clearly see that because of advent of Christianity, their culture will be completely wiped out from the map in a matter of decades. This is simply clear. In the eyes of the tribesmen, it is clear in the tools they make, it is clear in the way they speak, it is clear in the way they talk about their own ancestral tradition as something dark and old which should be forgotten. And what is a root without a tree? And what is a tree without a root? What is a man without some kind of tradition he subscribes to and some kind of a framework left for him by his ancestors? You see, I have a problem with the Western occultism. It is all too fluffy without any ground in what came before us, without any ground in our ancestors. Actually, it became trendy to hate your ancestors in modern life can path, and to see them as ignorant idiots, and us as brave revolutionaries who destroy the evil ancestral ways, blah, 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 blah. You know, I published this video in order to debunk so many modern fluffy misconceptions about witchcraft. Whenever somebody tells me what witchcraft is, I remember this shaman from this video who proclaimed I called my spirit guide and my spirit guide healed people with me. And then I did singing with my tribe and my tribe was in danger. So the spirit showed me the evil man within the opposite tribe. And we came to the rival tribe and butchered evil sorcerer and ate him at the fire together. I always remember his words. I watched this video when it just came out on YouTube, 10 years ago. And I always remembered the words of this shaman. And more and more practice 
So sorry, more and more I remember the words of this. Man, he is probably dead right now. The old tribesmen within the jungle do not have a lot of years to spend. So the shaman you saw in this video is probably dead. The old thing leader is now probably dead. Because this video I used as a source material is almost 10 years old. And tribesmen live with union in nature. They do not have modern technology to increase their lifespan. They indeed used sorcery back in the day to increase the lifespan. But they forbid them for, from practicing sorcery and now converted them to Christianity and proclaimed them evil cannibals. Despite the fact that those who proclaimed the tribesmen evil cannibals are ten times more destructive than the tribesmen themselves. Tribesmen can live in a jungle for tens of thousands of years. And the jungle will more or less stand. We now live in a jungle for a hundred years. And jungle will need tens of thousands of years to recover. So who is the biggest cannibal? Who is the biggest savage? Me, we, or the tribesmen? Now, I filmed the video to propose a middle ground. We do not have to be like the tribesmen. We do not have to live in a huts. Call ancestral spirits, count the witches, and count each other in order to create powerful rituals which will help the tribe. That's, I think, a little bit too extreme for the modern man. But we are also too embellished in technology and in our modern fluffy moral conundrums to the point that we project our own limited human morality upon ancient and primordial forces, which definitely have nothing to do with them. So we should remember the way of those tribesmen and try to incorporate the way of the tribesmen into our own way of thinking and living. And that's why we should call Segene the spirit guide of the old sorcerer from the tribesmen. In order to learn ways of her and her spirits and incorporate that into our own modern way of life so we can more healthy and powerful perspective in our existence. You see Man who lives in a jungle and hunts and kills other tribesmen in ritual is one extreme. But atheist who drugs himself with poisons, destroys nature and obliterates the biosphere is another extreme. And both extremes have a lot of work to do. In my opinion, we have to find some middle ground. And for middle ground, in order to reach it, we need to tap into, o into old forces like Sogeme, who can teach us the old ways. So we, we can incorporate them, work with them and improve our lives. Please call Sogeme according to the prescribed method in very well fortified sacred space and tell me your experience.